all mankind is enemies of God. And you see this? Right. In Romans 5, Romans 8 talks about our minds being hostile to him. Right. They don't want to and they cannot right. submit to God. We are at war with him. It talks about being hostile. So the peace now, post-Jesus, post-resurrection, is, is actually from wartime to, to now the enemy being vanquished and done away with because of the work of Jesus. And that brought peace again. We're be, right? This is what we teach. We're, we're being restored back to... Right. And so in our Christian lives, we engage the conflict. And create peace. Because it brings restoration. Rest, yep. It brings us back to... Well, it points us forward to the new creation that we're looking forward to now. Right. You know, we're not a, just a retrospect uh, faith. We're looking forward to, mm-hmm. the, to the new Jerusalem, new creation that is to come. And that's what restoration is pointing forward to. Right. Passivity well, doesn't do that. But that's what Christians are called to engage in, isn't it? Restoration. Mm-hmm. Like, we're, we're called to engage in that process of yeah. restoring all things back to how they were supposed to be. So, by ignoring a problem is not only not creating peace, but you're actually going against what God's called us to do. So, an example of someone who went pretty crazy in order to bring peace to the Israelite community. It was in the book of Numbers, and it's in chapter 25, and it's this character, uh, Phineas. Oh, Phineas. Now, the... the For pe- those of you who are pregnant and are <laughs> looking for name suggestions, I suggest Phineas. Like, the Bible usually says the zeal of Phineas. Now, God's wrath was coming down on the people, and so they were starting to shoo away all of the people that did not belong in the Israelite camp, getting them out Phineas knows of a couple in the act in their tent he knows this is happening grabs a spear and runs to their tent and thrusts it through both of them and God's wrath stops and y'all thought the bible was boring so try to tell me blessed are the peacemakers don't tell me it's new testament because 1 Corinthians 10 tells us that the stories of the old testament are for our application Plus, we believe in biblical theology. So, whole Bible is applicable, telling one story. Anyway, Phineas is our example of when there's sin in the camp, there is a way to go about it. Now, I don't say, no, don't go spear people in your church. Let's, let's not go. You need to qualify let's that. Not full, let's not go full native. Let's not go. <laughs> but he, he knew there was a conflict and he attacked it and it brought peace. It brought peace to the people. People's lives were saved because of the zeal of Phineas. So now what are our, what are our weapons? They aren't spears. They're spiritual weapons. Ephesians to, uh, 6 talks about the sword of the spirit. So we have different weapons now in, in the new age that we're in to wield. But what we are told by Paul that Erica was talking about in 2 Corinthians 5. Everybody knows 2 Corinthians 5, 17, which says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. We love this verse. Verse 18, all this is from God, who through Christ reconciled, that word reconciled means brought, reunite, basically, yep, Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. So we are supposed to reunite things back together, back to how they were supposed to be originally, yes. That is how we are supposed to be peacemakers, not by letting sin fester. Do we let sin? No, we don't. Just hang out and like, that's okay. I'm a peacemaker. God's like, you're a coward. Yeah. So this is another thing. When we were talking about this earlier, at the very end of the the verse, it says, blessed are the peacemakers. Really? Peacemakers? Don't do that. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Right there is even a correlation to the Mm -hmm. son of God. Right. Who is who brought peace through going to the battle and taking out the enemy and crushing the serpent's head? Well, he's our example. We're supposed to follow in his suit. Right. So what he did to make peace should be what we engage in every day. Mm -hmm. So if there is a conflict between you and a friend, maybe a friend um, has betrayed your trust or there's some issue that needs to be worked out, maybe... If it's bothering you to the point where you're talking about it and you, you can't just shrug it off mm-hmm. and move on with your life, if, if you've talked about it with someone 
it means you can't just get past it, you know? If, if it's something that's irritating you so much that you've talked about it with another friend or your spouse or whatever, mm-hmm. then it means it's bothering you to the point where you should go and talk to that person about it. Yeah, for sure. And you can say, you know, this really, maybe it shouldn't be that as big of a deal as it is to me, but it just makes me feel this way. And I, I would just like to talk about it with you. Mm-hmm. And you don't have to be accusative or be, you know, super angry or have it be a big deal. Condemning or anything. Right. Yeah. But oftentimes when I've had conflict with people, if you just bring it up, having to actually go to that person, it humbles you enough to allow for that bitterness to subside. Yeah, that's true. That that little sign of courage, it really means a lot to people too, I've noticed. I mean, that you're going to find that with people that don't want to talk, that, that are just real hard into you. But I have found more often than not that people do want real conversations and and if you come to them with a graciousness in your in your tone and gentleness, mm-hmm. which is a fruit of the spirit, and just say, "Hey, I really gotta talk to you about something," you know, and you know, and I understand this, that, and you can say, "Listen, you know, I understand, uh, you know, what's going on or whatever," but but I'm concerned about this, or mm-hmm. can I be praying for you, or are you aware of, right, you know, and, and I know I'm not perfect, and you know, but again, we're we're called to disciple each other and to bear one another's burdens. You know, um, this is a covenant community. Again, we are not individuals here. We don't just have Jesus with us in our little prayer closet, and that's as far as it goes. Although we are in a closet right now. We are definitely in Studio VB. Is a closet with a lot of school books. And spiders. And spiders that Eddie has murdered. I'm so proud of that kid. We should call. We should name him Phineas. See, he is a peacemaker. He brought peace to this house by murdering that wolf spider. It's true, he did. See? You know, if Living it out. someone is pregnant with a son, we have now given them a name suggestion and a nursery theme. Like arrows, you know. You're right. Just saying, Phineas, and you could decorate his bedroom in arrows. It's so hipster and in right now. Go to Hobby Lobby. Those are Done. Hard. You're welcome. <laughs> Pay me later. <laughs> I'll take my 10% commission. There's a hardcore band called Phineas. You know... I was thinking about this earlier, that a fruit of the Spirit is peace. Yeah. So if you're walking in the Spirit, then one of the fruits that should be manifest in your life is peace. Mm -hmm. But another working of the Spirit in our life is to convict us of sin. So even the Holy Spirit, in allowing for us to get to the point where we can bear the fruit of peace mm-hmm. has to convict us of our sin yeah. has to work something out has to engage with our you know mm-hmm. with our soul and weed some some junk out of there before we can manifest the fruit of peace yeah we have to understand too that sin is war sin is war against god that is right. an act of war against god we can't belittle it and like you talked about covering sins that's within the covenant community where Someone is just a little quirky and they're growing and they do some things that maybe... Oh, sure. They grow. So we cover that, right? They're, well, the Bible we says cover love that. covers a multitude of sins. If right. you can love someone enough to move past the sin, then yeah, absolutely do that. But where you're going to understand, like, if you, if you are not able to just move past it, mm-hmm. if you're thinking about it, if you have to talk to someone about it, then that mm-hmm. love is not covering sin. It means it's bothering you. Right. It's festering. It's blistering. Yeah. You need to go address it right away. Yep. But there are many times, I mean, especially if you're engaged in discipleship or oh, yeah. parenting. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Even with your spouse, how many little ways do certain things irritate you and you just... Never, babe. <laughs> <laughs> But, but there are some things that I'm sure, like, for some people would be really frustrating right. and irritating, but... Love covers but it. But love covers it, right. you know? I'm sure there are tons of things that I do that you just, you silently, sh- you know, roll your eyes or whatever and just think, not again, okay, not, you know? Not you, babe. Not you. Not another bobby <laughs> pin laying on the bathroom counter. Yeah, that's, that's what keeps me up at night, <laughs> It's the bobby pins everywhere. <laughs> everywhere you else. You get them on a dish. You got them right there on your, your night little... I'm just saying. Yeah. No, you're, you're right. We don't need to go there. But yeah, you're right. You know, the other thing people, you know, in our age of texting and messaging, we are getting worse and worse at face-to-face mm-hmm. confrontation, definitely, and even just talking. I've noticed more people, I just try and talk to people, and they just can't, it's like, it's hard. And I'm like, what is the matter with this generation? But, it, but it's really the, the case. 
But you know what? God tells us in uh, James 1 to ask him for wisdom, you know, and that if you ask in faith, it's coming. That You will get wisdom. And he asked, he said, ask for the spirit because Mm -hmm. like a good, you know, you being evil, give good things to your kids. I'm a good father. Mm -hmm. And of course, I'm going to give you the spirit. So, so ask for the spirit and and ask for wisdom to know how to confront people because I got to. And when. When. And, and of course, remember the fruits of the Spirit being gentleness, kindness, self-control, patience. All these things should accompany your confrontation of the sin, too. Well, and even thinking about that verse that love covers a multitude of mm-hmm. sins, another fruit of the Spirit is love. You know, love, right. joy, peace, patience. Mm-hmm. So, if you are walking with the Spirit and you're in God's Word and you're growing and flourishing and there's something that pops up, say, between you and a I don't know, a spouse. Mm -hmm. If it is something that needs to be dealt with, then hopefully you have the fruit of love that the Holy Spirit has given to you and you can just move past it Mm -hmm. if that's possible. If you can't, then maybe you need to decide whether or not you need to engage in a conversation with your spouse about whatever the issue is Mm -hmm. so that peace can be restored there, you know? But, but, Either way, if you're walking in the Spirit, you're going to be able to make peace, Mm -hmm. and you're going to be able to display peace, and you're going to be able to cover that sin that's committed or that offense, whatever's going on, if it's possible. Well, and the Spirit uses people. We are, I mean, God always uses people to spread His Word and to to, um, cultivate that community of believers. Mm -hmm. So... The reason why it's bothering you is might be because the Holy Spirit's telling you, hey, I'm going to use you for this person. Or it might be the other way around. Maybe it's something that's bothering you, and you go and talk to the other person. The other person might just say, I hear what you're saying, but honestly, I think this is more of an issue in your heart. <laughs> Maybe you need to stop Backfire. being so self-centered. Maybe you need to stop thinking true. so much of yourself. Yeah, that's true, too. this has nothing to do with you, really. Yeah. Or whatever, I don't know. Yeah, true. But, you know, it makes me think that, you know, a lot of the people who avoid conflict like this are really protecting themselves. To some their, extent, yeah. Their reputation. Because um, they don't want to be known as the bad guy. Yeah. They don't want to be known as the bad guy or the curmudgeon one. Or the mean person. The mean, yeah. It's, but, man, that's just self-love, really. Mm-hmm. It's self-preservation, self-love. It's not. It's regarding self higher than... Um, than the commands of God and what he's told us to. Well, because you'd rather keep yourself in a, in a Good place light. that's safe and comfortable rather than, you know, help someone else out of the mud, mm-hmm. out of the war that they're engaging in between God. Man, had, had Jesus preferred comfort. Right. Just let that sink in. <laughs> I'm sitting here like, man. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't super comfortable for Jesus to make peace. I'm just saying. Yeah, but the rewards are eternal and wonderful. It's true. So, and even the, you know, full disclosure, right? Me and Erica have fought before. No, we don't fight. <laughs> Robust dialogue. Robust dialogue. But the the peace after, the growth that does come from from us working together and working through stuff and, and growing together these last nine and a half years is awesome. It really is. Yep. And had we avoided conflict, I mean, we'd be a weird couple if we'd avoided all the conflict well, ever. And that's why I always laugh when I hear newlyweds say, like, oh, we don't ever fight. <laughs> Do you talk? <laughs> well, if you talk to each other long enough, it'll happen. It'll come out, believe you me. But in a sense, engaging in that conflict, and though that's something that you and I need to get better at, is engaging in conflict in ways that are maybe more holy. <laughs> but... <laughs> But engaging in those conflicts is good because mm-hmm. it does sanctify us. It does show us where, you know, we are not being obedient to Christ and we're not uh, living out what he has instructed us to live out. And yeah. and so that's why God does have us living in a community because iron sharpens iron, right? Exactly. And how does that happen? It, it happens from friction. when When two things bump up against each other, and there's friction that happens, well, then things get sharpened, then we are, you know, no longer dull instruments unable to be used. Mm-hmm. So hopefully we, we help 
correct some of the thinking on what blessed are the peacemakers and how peacemaking is not being passive. You know.